Hi, my name is Ronald Wagner. My project is called Opioid Opposition. It's about the negative effects of opioid abuse, such as opioid overdose, um, addiction, depression, and all of the negative effects related to opioids um, and heroin. The problem, heroin-related overdose deaths nearly quadrupled between 2002 and 2013 in the United States. Uh, in 2012, Alaska's death rate from opioid pain relievers was more than twice the rest of the country. From 2004 to 2012, the number of Medicaid health care service payment requests for heroin poisoning increased by almost a factor of 10. So, when deaths from something like a prescribed class of drugs nearly quadruples in less than the span of 10 years, um, and if you look at the graph in the top right, you can see that it's only opo opioids, uh, not even cocaine or heroin. There was only a small spike in heroin when the DEA cracked down on opioid, um, on heroin actually, and that's kind of where you see the spike in opioid percent change uh, in the number of deaths because they made it harder to get opioids, so people went to heroin because it was easier to get and cheaper. Um, and the part about the Medicaid healthcare services, so we all pay social costs because a lot of these people can't afford the care so we end up taking the burden on as a society rather than on the individuals themselves who they just suffer you know from death and other medical things as well as quality of life and things like that of course so the target population um, according to the division of public health and population the, the population with the highest risk of abusing opioids are adults within the age range of about 20 to 29. Um, it's actually not like teenagers who are 16 to 18. It's more young adults. So the reasons uh, cited for this is that young adults have a lot of pressure placed upon them. They have little resources for help. They often have no support structures or support network networks under them to help guide them through uh, life as they fall victim to addiction and substance abuse rather easily. A lot of this has contributed to depression. Um, it's also a contributing factor to substance abuse and opioid abuse, and then it just feeds the vicious cycle, so they can't get a, their career started or they drop out of college or whatever, and then it just leads to the vicious cycle where they turn to drugs and not having a support network, yeah, there's no way out of it really which is why I wanted to create a program like this to kind of help the people uh, show them what their resources are and how to do it uh, and be armed with the education that they need to better their lives essentially. So the design of the project, it's a social media education and awareness campaign. It's going to have weekly updates and uh, YouTube videos that are educational uh, to try and help people who abuse opioids. Um, there'll be two educational community events uh, with guest speakers and a massive amount of helpful resources available to them. Um, I'll explain more about these events in a later slide. Um, there's going to be a lot of naloxone education awareness and access to naloxone, so we're going to sell it um, if we need to have somebody there to prescribe it. Depending on the legality of it, we will do that as well whatever we have to do. Um, so that's the project, um, an introduction to it. I'll explain it more later. So more about the activities. So the social media material will include protective factors, risk factors, how to identify risk factors, and encourage protective factors. So if you look to the table on the right, the risk factors are in the left-hand column. The domains they come from are in the middle, and the protective protective factors on the right. So risk factors are factors that contribute to somebody uh, turning to and abusing opioids or pretty much any substance. Uh, it comes from the NIDA website, National Institute on Drug Abuse. Uh, protective factors are factors that predict against uh, abusing a substance or an opioid. Resources available to help um, people who abuse substances or opioids will be provided. Um, they're going to be booths at the two activities uh, full of people who provide helpful services that they can 
take advantage of um, based on their flyers and pamphlets with information and contact details on them that will be provided at the events. There's going to be a lot of naloxone education. Naloxone's a, if you go back to the other slide, of the compound on the bottom right, the molecule, that or reverses overdose effects from opioids such as heroin and others so it can actually reverse an overdose and save a life pretty much instantaneously after it's injected properly so the events there's going to be two of them one's going to be at west high school the other at wasilla high school um the reason being that the metropolitan air areas of south central alaska are the highest um rates of opioid abuse, uh, particularly Anchorage and the Matanuska Valley, so I figured we would have a high school in Anchorage and one in the valley. Um, so these events, as I said before, will be comprised of guest speakers, medical professionals, agencies, organizations s with uh, support services, and things of that nature, essentially. They're all going to have booths with flyers and pamphlets, as I said. Um, and there'll be a stage with guest speakers who are either like medical professionals or people who have something, a story to tell about um, somebody who was abusing opioids or somebody that got over it, uh, motivational things. There'll be psychologists, addiction specialists there to talk um, just as resources to help the people abusing opioids to not do that and help change their life for the better. So there's going to be a lot of partner organizations and agencies, way too many to fit on a page. These are just some of them. Uh, the hospital, basically, because we need to advertise these events to get people to attend them and know about them so that they can benefit from them. So we're going to have flyers at Providence and ask them to help promote it for us. Obviously, the uh, Anchorage School District in Matanuska is a sit in a borough school district because that's where the events are going to be. And we also hope they help us advertise and spread the word. Some of the guest speakers and people with booths are going to be APD, the Alaska State Troopers, the National Institute on Drug Abuse, the World Health Organization, and then more advertising. We need Channel 2 News, hopefully, to advertise for us, and KWL, uh, the radio station, as well as any other radio stations. We need all the advertising we can get. Um and all the in-kind contributions we can get so we can make this a successful program with, that a lot of people know about and that are therefore exposed to and participate in to reap the benefits of, otherwise it's a wasted grant. Um, some other agencies are like the NIDA, the National Institute on Drug Abuse, the CDC, um, abuse agencies, uh, department, health and social services and things of that nature, um, as well as other medical professionals, even politicians, anything we can get, we will have. So the anticipated results, because it has been shown the death rates within communities that have access to naloxone and people trained to use it drop anywhere from 37 to 90%, our goal is to drop overdose-related death rates from opioids. Uh, anywhere from about 37 to 90 percent. The goal is 90 percent because it has been obtained um, with the proper support and legal structure. We should be able to do that. So other studies about substance abuse in middle schoolers and high schoolers have shown within the past 30 days among populations to drop around 2 percent to 5 percent and these are uh, programs that have a similar model as mine. They just have educational components and awareness components and this one goes a little bit further than that because it incorporates specialist and uh, naloxone use and things of that nature so I think we can get closer to maybe even 20% maybe uh, that's the goal anyway so the other thing is that was a short-term project and they only did for past 30 days so what if we followed them for the entire duration of our project, I think that the percentage would just keep going up and up throughout the project as more people uh, heard about it, had exposure to it, and invested in it over time. I think it would 
have more of an impact on their life, and therefore we would have even better results than that. It's also too important to note the the fact that responsible opioid re uh, use is not abuse, and we don't want to dog on people who take them um, responsibly. That's actually the exact thing we're here to encourage. So we just want to stop the abuse. Um, that's all. So the analysis and evaluation measures to be used. Uh, Opioid-related death rates will be compared at four different points in time. So there'll be a point uh, before the implementation of the project, like a week before it. Um, there'll be one after the first event to see if it has any effect. Maybe, maybe not. After the second event, uh, there'll be one. There'll be a month after the second event, and then there'll be one four months after the second event. And then um, data can always be taken at other points years after the event to see if it has any effect or if there was any policies that arise from the program um, that helped as well. So there'll be other statistical measures used uh, to compare at these times, such as abuse rates, Medicaid claims related to opioids, how many reversed overdoses that were reported, and other things, and we hope to get this data from local uh, clinics and hospitals like Providence and Regional, um, and even pain prevention centers and addiction treatment centers, rehab centers, jails, um, from ABD, the state troopers, paramedics, things of that nature. Um, so the differences in the results will show the failure or the success of the project. If abuse rates climb, the project has either failed or the rates are just too much for the project to impact. And if the rates fall, then the project is a success, and the rate of which they fall is the rate of the project's success, how successful it was. Um, people's testimonials and stories provided at the events or through social media or other forms such as email or anything like that will also be taken into account of the project's effectiveness and success or failure because any life saved or positively affected is success uh, of at least one person's life, their quality of life, or their life that they're still living, essentially. And that's my references. Um, yeah.